Today we're taking a look at everything that I keep in my EDC pack. What's going on everyone? Back with another episode of Stuff and Things and today we are taking a look at my current favorite backpack and all of the contents inside of it. I do have a lot of stuff to talk about in this video so first I guess I will start off with why I chose this backpack and some other options that I've used in the past. So for the past couple of weeks I have been testing out this Vertex EDC Ready Pack. If you want to know the exact dimensions and everything about this bag, I will of course leave a link in the description down below where you can find all of that information. But for just a very broad overview, I like it because it is a two strap normal style backpack. It's probably a little bit bigger than what you would consider like a normal size Jansport style of backpack. It has three main compartments where I keep all of my stuff and then it of course has the Vertex concealed carry type of compartment in the back. But we will get into all of that a little more in a second. So previously I was using the Vertex commuter sling. This is a sling bag of course, so it is just one strap that comes across your chest. It may look pretty small, but it actually packs out pretty nicely and I've already covered this thing and all of its features. So if you wanna check out that video, I will leave a link for it right up there in the corner. I have also covered this bag in the past too. This is the Vertex Gamut. This thing is just a little bit bigger in every way when compared to the EDC Ready Pack and I used this thing for a while and I really still would. The only real reason I decided to move to the EDC Ready Pack is one for the size, it is a little bit smaller. And two, this thing is murdered out, it's all black and you guys know I like all black everything. So if I had the gamut in all black I probably would be using this too but this thing is nice, small and compact and it holds everything that I need and even a little bit more too. So if you have a lot of stuff with you the gamut might be the way to go but this thing works fine just for me. Now the overall concept of an EDC bag or an everyday carry bag, a backpack or some kind of bag system that you carry with you everywhere you go, it was never really my thing. For the most part I would typically have my everyday carry items that I carry on my person which I am right now. And then for my line of work making videos and doing things that you guys see here on the channel I would typically have a dedicated camera bag and then depending on what I was filming I would either have a range bag or a specific backpack for riding motorcycles. I would have tools and medical supplies in my car or wherever I needed them and basically everything was kind of spread all over the place depending on what I was doing. So when I got this pack I decided to kind of take everything that I had in all of these different places and combine them into one small pack. That way no matter where I go, no matter what I'm doing, whether I'm working, whether I'm going out for fun, whether I'm going for a ride on my motorcycle or I'm going up to my range. No matter where I go, no matter what I'm doing, I have everything that I personally need in this bag right here. Now one strange thing that I see in a lot of these videos is that when I'm going over things that are fit for me, things that I carry that are good for myself, a lot of people get very opinionated and they're like, oh, well you should have this and you should have that. I'm not here to tell you what to carry with you. This is a simple look into my bag of things that I use pretty much every single day. So everything that you are about to see in here is fit for me and my lifestyle, everything that I do. So your bag is going to look completely different than this. I would also like to say that this is not a survival bag or a get home bag or a bug out bag or anything like that. There may be some tools and stuff in here that I could use in a situation where I get stuck out in an urban environment, but this is really not for that. This is simply a backpack that I use to keep all of my filming stuff in, stuff that I use for work, and anything else that I see fit to have with me in my everyday life. You guys get that? Make sense? Alright, let's get into the bag. The Vertex EDC Ready Pack is advertised as a versatile, daily use backpack sized to fit a 15 inch laptop plus the other materials that you need on the go. This backpack is very comfortable in my opinion. It has a mesh back panel that allows airflow. And I'm definitely a fan of the two shoulder straps instead of the sling style bag. But at the same time, if you go with a traditional backpack style like this, you may lose some functionality that you do have with a sling pack. There is modular webbing across the shoulders which you can attach something like your keys which I do from time to time. There is a sternum strap which I am actually a fan of and do use. And then there is also a waist strap which I decided to remove because I don't really find a use for it. So on the outside of the back, other than it being black, this thing doesn't really scream tactical. The only thing that you might find a little bit tactical is the loop velcro on the bottom. I of course slapped one of my dopest vlog in the game patches on here which will be up on my website as soon as the channel hits 300,000 subscribers. On each side you will find these pockets which you could squeeze a water bottle in there. I typically don't carry a water bottle with me but I do always have my Joby Gorillapod. This thing is a pretty tight fit in here but when I'm out cruising around on a skateboard I need to have this thing with me. So the tight fit actually does keep it nice and close to the side of the bag and then it won't be kind of flopping around because it is so tight. Now if I pull this out of here you will also see a little retention device type of thing in here. 
if you throw something in there that isn't a water bottle and you want it to be a little bit more secure, you can kind of cinch this down and then keep it closed. There is a nice grab handle on top and this bag is pretty heavy now. It's loaded out with all of my gear. This thing is built really tough though. I typically hang this from a hook even while it is loaded out and there is no sign that this thing is gonna tear loose. The construction of it all is just super quality. Underneath this Vertex logo in the front is also another grab handle. This makes it nice for pulling in and out of your car. When I get into my car, I typically grab it by this handle, pull it across and just set it on my passenger seat. Another thing that is nice about this bag being all black is that the interior on both of my cars are black. My windows are also tinted, so I feel pretty comfortable that I can put this thing on my front seat, definitely in my back seat, or even on the floorboard of my passenger side. And this thing is going to go relatively unnoticed. It is very hard to see this bag when it is sitting on a black seat with black windows. Obviously, I don't want anything in here to be stolen, so that is a nice kind of subtle feature. I'm telling you guys, all black everything is the way to go. So first up, we will get into probably my most used pouch, and that is this front pocket right here. The zippers stop about halfway down on the side here, and the pocket continues to the bottom of the bag, so that basically creates this little pouch. That way, nothing is going to fall out of here when you open it up. The first thing I keep in here are headphones, which I use for editing or anything else. If I'm traveling, I can listen to music. I also have an anchor battery charger. I can use this to charge my phone, spare camera batteries, pretty much anything else that has a USB port. And then to go along with this, I have this little cord thing that I found on Amazon a while ago. I actually use this thing a lot, so I'm going to leave a link for it in the description down below. I actually need to get more for myself because I use this thing so frequently. I'm constantly taking it in and out of my bag. There is a little clip on here, so I could technically clip this to like a zipper pull and it is standard USB and then I have USB-C, micro USB, an iPhone cable, mini USB and then another micro USB. So I use this to charge my GoPros, my cell phone, my friend's cell phone, pretty much anything that I need I can charge it using this little cluster of cables. One downside to this is that it is not good for data transfer, so you're just gonna get a charge with this. Another thing that you will see with the inside of this bag is that it is this tan color. This makes it really easy to see if you have anything kind of floating around in the bottom of the bag. Like you just saw, a lot of the gear that I carry is black and camera batteries are black. So if those things are inside of a black pocket inside of a bag, they would probably be pretty hard to see, so that is a nice touch as well. In the front here, there's a little mesh zipper pocket, and inside I have some business cards. If I ever run across someone that wants to know more about what I do, I can hand some of these out. And then also in this pocket, I carry two different SD cards. One is a backup for my main camera, and then this one is a smaller micro reader. That way I can read cards out of like a GoPro or my drone. So these things are obviously super important for when you do what I do. There are also some pen pockets up here. I think I only have one thing in here, and that is this little lens cleaner. If I need to clean this off, keep you guys looking good. And then on this side, it screws off and reveals this little felt tip. So that's just something that I use when filming. And then the last thing, just something that I threw in here, I have a bunch of different patches. When I run into some of you guys out in public, I feel bad when you come up to me and you tell me you watch my videos and I don't really have anything to like show my appreciation. So I keep some patches on me and kind of hand these out to anyone that I come across in person. Oh yeah, and one other thing, these will be restocked in my store at 300K. So that is it for the front pouch. Now we're moving up to the good stuff. I'm gonna skip over this middle pouch for now. This is where I keep a lot of stuff that I'm going to have a lot to say about. So I'm going to skip up to the top portion of this bag, and this is where you will find the rest of my work items. So as you can see, this thing does fit a 15 inch MacBook Pro. This is what I use to edit with, answer emails, and do all of my business related stuff out of this. That sits in this nice kind of stretchy elastic pocket and it keeps the thing very secure. It doesn't kind of bounce around in here, which is nice. I also keep another lens on me. This is a Canon 24 to 105. I use this lens specifically for filming longer shots, tighter stuff, B-roll, and a lot of Sunday Gunday stuff as well. I also have a variable ND filter in here, and this is kind of a video that I could get into in the future going over all of my camera gear again, but we will cross that bridge when I get to it. And then I have some spare camera batteries because you can never have enough when you are filming all day long. And then in the flap that flips down here, there is another mesh pocket. There are also some pen pockets up here, which I don't keep anything in, but I will get into that a little bit in a second as well. In here, I have a little peak design clip type of thing. I personally use this to put my camera and keep it on my belt, especially when I'm going to trade shows like SHOT Show or the NRA Show. This is a good way for people to carry a camera around when you're running and gunning and you need to have your hands free from time to time. But again, that is something that I will cover in a future camera gear video. And then I also have my MacBook charger and that is pretty much it for this pocket. Now you will notice that I do not have a camera in here because for the most part when I'm out filming, I am holding my camera everywhere 
I go. If I'm getting on a flight, I will have a backpack and I will also have my camera in my hand the whole time. Could I break my camera down and take the mic off it and fit everything in here? Yes, I definitely could, but that's just not how I use this bag. In the top here, there is also a little hole for a hydration bladder if you wanted to put something like that inside of here. Like I said, that is not something that I would do, but maybe if you want to set this bag up for some type of survival or bug out bag, that is definitely an option. Now before we get into the next pocket, I might as well talk about what I use these for. Like I said, I pretty much bring this backpack with me everywhere now, and if it is not on my back, chances are it is in my car. The reason that I leave these open up here and extra room in my bag is basically for anything else that I am carrying on me at the time. Maybe if I'm going into the gym, which I don't do, or if I'm going to a pool, I'm wearing shorts and I don't have a lot of pockets or anything on me to carry stuff. A prime example actually is last week I was out dressed up with some nice dress pants and no shirt pocket or anything. I needed a place to keep all of my stuff because I didn't want to have it on me in my pockets. So with this room open, I was able to take all my typical EDC items that I keep in my pockets and then slide them up here and keep them nice and secure in the bag. So there I have my pocket knife, here I have my flashlight, my wallet, I can throw that inside of this pocket as well because there is room. And then same thing with my keys, I could throw these in here, but for the most part, I will typically clip them onto the outside of the bag. And those kind of just hang from the shoulder strap here. If I need quick access to them, I simply pop them off. And then the rest of the space in here, I keep that open for a situation where maybe it's getting hot out and I want to take my hoodie off. I can cram a lot of other stuff in here and I still have room. So that brings us to the first subject that I would like to talk about in this middle pocket here. And if I open this up, you will see I have a QVO secondary holster in here. Now you might be asking Talon, why do you keep your holster in the front of the bag when it has this dedicated pouch in the back? And the simple reason for that is because I don't use this bag for off-body carry. I actually have another bag right here, the Vertex Transit bag, and I use this specifically for off-body carry. If I'm going out somewhere, I'm riding my motorcycle and I don't want to have my gun and all of my items on me, I will carry this bag specifically to carry a gun off body. It has the same sling design as the EDC commuter sling and drawing from a sling bag like this is much, much easier than drawing from a backpack style bag like this. I know you guys are probably interested in seeing what I have in this bag, so I will do that in a future video. So because this bag does have two straps, it definitely makes it more comfortable, but when I sling it around to my front, if I were to draw from this back pocket here, it just makes it a little bit more awkward. Yes, you could definitely do it, but like I said, I have a dedicated bag for that. Most of the time when I'm out and about and I'm carrying a backpack like this, I have my gun on me. I don't like to keep things in here if I don't have to. But in a situation where I want to offload all of my on-body EDC items, I do not put the holster back here. Instead, I do do have a Safe Life Defense backpack panel. This is soft armor level 3A, very similar to the TAC vest video that I've done in the past. So I keep this thing in here with the wear face towards the body. It's about the weight and size and kind of feels like a notebook. So this thing just slides in here, really takes up no room. And then if I were to ever sling this bag in front of me for whatever reason, I do have that protection there. That's one of those things that obviously I hope I don't ever need that, but it is there. It's kind of out of sight, out of mind. So now for this pocket, like I said, I have my QVO secondary mounted in here. This is a secondary holster specifically for the gun that I'm carrying. So if I am emptying my pockets and I don't want to keep this on me for whatever reason, I can simply slip it in here and then this lives inside of this bag. There is some molly webbing in here with loop Velcro. I could put all of my EDC items on here as well. Basically anything with a pocket clip, but that is where I put my holster. This is of course the QVO Velcro mount as well and I simply just kind of put it right there like that. That leaves me just enough room to keep a Neomag on the side over here. I typically do not carry one of these in my pocket, but I do keep it in my bag. That way, if I have an extra magazine, I can simply clip it right on the side there and it just kind of hangs there. The magnet of the Neomag and the Velcro mount from QVO is definitely strong enough that this thing is not going to be falling off of here. But at the same time, if I ever need it in a pinch, I can draw this no problem. And then with the Neomag, I can grab that magazine and drive it home. So that is the functionality of the top portion, but now we are getting into the good stuff down below. First up, I have a black pair of mechanics gloves. This definitely comes in handy when I'm out at the range. In the Northeast here, it is getting very cold. There's actually snow on the ground right now, and for the most part, I am moving around my steel targets every time that I shoot. So there are splinters from the wood and everything that's being all shot up, and the steel kind of gets cold. This is just a simple way to protect your hands and keep them warm at the same time. 
And then of course, while out on the range, it is very important to have medical stuff. A lot of people ask me about medical stuff all of the time in the comment sections. And it seems to me like a lot of people are kind of just taking information that they hear online and just kind of regurgitating it. I see so many people carrying tourniquets in their EDC. They like have them on their belts and stuff like that. Yes, it is definitely a very good idea to have medical supplies with you, but if you are not trained with them, you're kind of defeating the whole purpose of it. So yes, whenever I am out shooting, I do have medical stuff. I do keep a cat tourniquet in this bag. I do not have just one though. I actually have another full little mini med kit in here. I got this from North American Rescue after training at the S12 event with the guys from D-Day Response Group. Everyone who was there went through three days of medical training and we are technically TCCC certified after that course. So everything that we used in that course, every single thing that we learned about on how to treat different injuries, all of the things we learned about are in this pack. Now the things that I have in here didn't come directly from North American Rescue like this. I also added a few things. And I really don't want to get into all of the nitty gritty details about this, but I do have some gauze, another cat tourniquet, some simple band-aids and stuff like that if you ever cut your finger and it's not that serious. But then I also have some combat gauze. I have chest seals in here. I also have some more heavy duty gauze in the back and then also a pair of rubber gloves to treat anything that hopefully I will never have to do. I can cover this a little bit more in the future if you guys are actually interested in the medical supplies that I carry. But to reiterate again, yes, I think it is very important to have something like a tourniquet in your EDC in some way, shape, or form. But at the same time, don't just go out and buy one because you see people doing it on Instagram. It is so, so important to actually know how to use one of these things effectively and the correct way. So if you just bought one of these without doing any actual training or research, it is very good that you have one of these, but please know how to use it. The same thing goes for any other medical supplies you have as well. Train with the stuff because it is very, very important, especially if you do carry a gun. I don't want to lecture too much about that, but hopefully you guys get the point. And then onto the final thing, this tiny little pack in the bottom of my bag that makes this thing completely empty now. This is a little like tool type of bag from Maxpedition. And I have a ton of stuff in here. Most of the stuff I typically don't need every single day, but this is sort of like the survival portion of the bag if you want to call it that. If I unzip this thing, you can see all of the contents inside. Here I have some chapstick. That's great to have, especially in the winter months. I have a spare AAA battery for this Olight that I keep in here. This is the i3T EOS, a very inexpensive light, but it has some great output to it. And then behind here, I keep a little paper notebook, which I actually have never used, but it's there. I also have some Tylenol and Omeprazole down there, as well as some Band-Aids, just some simple first aid stuff to have. In the middle here, I have a couple of zip ties that kind of wrap around the outside of here. I just stuck them on the inside of the bag. Zip ties are great to have, especially if you ride motorcycles. I don't think a motorcycle is complete until there are some form of zip ties around it. If anyone out there rides, you will know that zip ties can definitely be your best friend when riding a motorcycle. I also have a safety pin in here and then two little pins for basically whatever you need them for. I've actually used these pins before to take out SD cards and phones and things like that. Then moving down to this side, I have the Leatherman rebar. I'm obviously not carrying a lot of tools with me and anything that I really need to fix, hopefully I can fix it with the rebar. It has some pliers, wire cutters, a little file, saw, all sorts of little screwdriver heads, can opener. It definitely is a good idea to carry a multi-tool with you and this thing kind of covers all of the needs that I've ever had. And then on this side I have a Sharpie. This is one of my favorite types of Sharpies. It has a little fine point on it. I have a Bic lighter for whatever reason. I'm not really out here starting fires, but I have it there. And then I have a $20 bill back here. For some reason, maybe if I lose my wallet or my credit cards are not working for whatever reason, I have that there just to kind of help me out in a pinch. And then in the back here, I have green paracord. There obviously is some practical applications to having cordage like this, but whatever, I just kind of threw it in there. And then in the very bottom here, I also have little earplugs, and these things have actually saved me in a pinch too when I made it all the way up to my range and I forgot my ears. I left my electric ear pro at home, so luckily I had these in my bag and I've actually used those in the past. So that is it for this little micro EDC kit, and this thing just kind of lives in the bottom of my Vertex bag. So that is it for everything that I keep with me in my everyday pack. I have everything that I need to work and do what I do, but at the same time, I also have a couple extras just for the what if situations. This setup works perfectly for me, but like I said, this may not be your ideal setup. It took me a little while of experimenting to see what I actually needed to have with me and what I felt necessary to have with me on a daily basis. 
So the bag that you choose will definitely determine something like that. My recommendation for an EDC pack is to basically take all of the items that you need to have with you at all times, lay them out in front of you like I have all of my stuff laid out here, and then decide on what bag you want after that. Chances are, if you start off with something bigger, like this gamut, if you get this bag first, you're going to take all of your EDC items and kind of load it up in here, but then since you have all of that extra room, chances are you're gonna find things to fill it that you don't actually need. Then this is a big bag, so when you pack this thing out, you're going to be carrying a lot of stuff with you and it probably will get pretty heavy. Now this bag is definitely a great bag. I can take all of my items and put them in here and then I will have even more of that extra room that I like to have even with my EDC ready pack. But like I said, it is best to kind of see what you actually need to have with you, lay it all out, and then decide on a bag after that. I definitely love a lot of what Vertex makes and I primarily only carry their bags anymore. My two main bags would be this EDC ready pack now. And then for off body carry, I do use the Transit and I definitely have to bring you guys a video on this because it's kind of interesting how I have this set up. So yeah, that's basically it for my everyday carry backpack. Hopefully you guys learned something from this video or took some form of value out of it. And if you did, I would appreciate it if you slapped a like on the video. If you have any questions on anything that I showed here, chances are you probably do because I covered a lot of different stuff. You can leave those questions in the comments down below and I will try to answer them unless I plan on addressing them in a future video. Now, if you're new to the channel, consider clicking subscribe because I make new videos every week and I'm definitely going to be covering more bags like this in the future, so stay tuned for that. That's all that I had for today, so as always, thank you guys for watching and I will talk to you in the next one.